Rick, in looking at the issues in the red zone yesterday on tape, uh, was there was it a combination of execution, play calling, uh, how, especially for an area that you all have been traditionally pretty good at? Yeah, uh, we had an efficient run to start the drive, one drive down there. Um, you know, Ryan probably could have got the ball and you know to to Woods. You know, I think coming the play that we had for him, and then he made a decision not to. Um, which obviously is the quarterback's prerogative, you know, and then progressed on and, you know, didn't, didn't really give Chig, you know, a chance. Um, that was the one series. Um, the, the other series we, we got pressured, you know, the, 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 the ability to, to handle blitz zero, which we've done well in the past. And it wasn't something that, that we did. Um, so, you know, we, we know that you know, we have to be, you know, much better uh, in those opportunities, and, and we have been. There's evidence for, for many years of us doing that. This year, last year, you know, only thing that matters is, is what we're going to do against you know Philly moving forward. Did the Bengals maybe use more run blitzes yesterday than some teams have against you, or did you guys just not? No, they brought the play? nickel just like they have you know throughout the year. They brought the safety. Um, no, they, I wouldn't say that there was more run blitzes. That's, that's how they played us, you know, and you know. Felt like we were prepared. We just have to, you know, be able to block them and, move, and get some movement. You know, we started the game off with the, you know, we felt like a, a good run. Had everybody blocked and you know, gained nine yards, but then you know, just really never took advantage of the line of scrimmage. Never were able to to string anything together. Just too many inefficient runs for us. Derek's, I think, averaged two point eight the last three weeks. Is, is that just come down to not winning enough one-on-one -on -one battles? Okay. Well, I mean, he's part of that. I mean, that's that's it's everybody. It's when we have success in the run game, it's uh, it's everybody, and and when we're inefficient, it's everybody as well. And uh, you know, our combination blocks have to be good, you know, whether it's in a zone scheme or a gap scheme, and you know, we got to get got to get him going. And uh, you know, when we do, we'll have to break tackles and you know, make sure we get him. Force players blocked on on the second level. I really like the way Traylon is starting to emerge as a playmaker for you guys. Well, I think he continues to improve. I think he's um, shown the ability to go up and get the football, and had a right read the other day in zone, snapped down, Ryan threw it to him. You know, we had a couple of those. You know, Woody had one of those, and uh, Hoop had one of those, and then you know, I think he's trying to play fast. I think his effort was great along with other guys on that screen when, when Derek unfortunately fumbled, the guy made a great play, uh, you know, and training was hustling. So, you know, that that's a good teaching moment that uh, you just never know when the play is going to be that's going to require your effort. And you could go 30 plays and, and bust your tail and, and really not be needed. And then all of a sudden, you, you know, we need you to protect the guy with the football. And, and that's what we preach. And it was good to see that that, um, that happened, unfortunately, not for, for the fumble, but the, the ability to be there and, and take advantage of it. Were you feeling uh, unsportsmanlike at the end? Did, did, did both Strong and, and Tier uh, get, get the long snapper? And how's that jive with what, what they're taught? Well, I just think you, anytime you, you do that, that that's going to be a penalty. You know, I mean, that's, uh, that, that's not a decision or, or anything that we, we want or need. You know, that's. Uh, you know, we have to have to be careful. There's only they're only looking for certain things. You know, make sure you don't cover them up, and make sure you don't have the appearance of hitting them in the head or neck. So we, it's not something we can do. Mike, with 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 Derek, so much of the identity of this team has been tied to him in the run game now for a while. And you know, how much is that handcuffed to scheme and personnel? And by that I mean, how difficult is it to change directions when it's when it's not working? Well, well, Gentry, our job, you know, obviously is to understand, you know, who it is that, that's, that's running the ball and has had success. And, um, you know, Derek has got a unique skill set. That's, you know, his size, his length, um, you know. So we'll have to continue to, to, to find ways to get him into the second level to, to where he can use his size, his speed. Continue to try to get him on the corner and, and, and break tackles and stiff arm and do the things that he's done. Um, you know, I thought the screen was an excellent, well-executed play by Brew and those guys, and we've hit a couple of those. 
you know. So I think that there's some things that, you know, we have to to be able to get to, to to, to get him the football. Um, but our first focus is is finding ways to to run it and and uh, you know to control the game and let those plays, those run plays and some of those play actions um, marry with each other. So. I guess after watching film, I mean, there's some of the problems in the red zone. You think consistently stand out to maybe keep you from being as effective there as you have been? Uh, they blitz blitz zeroed, and we didn't handle it very well. Um, you know, had a third and five that. And we didn't convert, so you know we just have to continue to. Uh, and we did did a nice job on third down. You know, I mean, there's some guys when you lose, when you win, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. And I thought thought we did a nice job on some of these third and mediums that we picked up a lot of that probably in previous years we hadn't or pre- previous weeks, excuse me. Um, so kind of as bad as it was, we were still, you know, able to to. to to get some first downs when we were inefficient on first and second. And, you know, we converted on some some really nice third downs where we protected and progressed through. Um, uh, how much did it help in that personnel effect? You got pressure on the quarterback maybe the last couple of games. Um, you know, we got to – every week we got to find ways to, you know, affect the quarterback. And it's – Trying to make him earn it, you know. We we didn't. You know, the rush lanes weren't good enough at times, and, and obviously, um, seven plays for 186 yards is is not making him earn it. You know, 59 for 180 some is is. You know, you go from seven plays for 26 yard average to 59 plays at a three yard average. So, we we have to tackle. We have to coordinate the rush. You know, and just there were some things that were. You know, uncharacteristic. You know, allowing the quarterback to to scramble on third and twelve to extend the play, and then and then lose the guy. You know, that was a not a very good series there. That they ran the ball for their second. You know, we've only had the ball running on us two times, and certainly didn't think it was going to be from the eight yard line. You talked about Jeff being the best blocking tight end. Has has anything happened that's closed the gap there? Maybe in him blocking less well, and the other guys blocking better. Well, we're just going to continue to try to get guys in there. I think that Jeff had some some good blocks. I think there was you know a couple that you know have to be absolutely better. You know, we can't can't turn and and, and dictate you know where the running back um, runs. You know, we have to get into the line of scrimmage. We have to be on our landmark. You know, cover them up. Um, but you know that that group is you know we've got four of those guys that are active, and you know we're going to have to continue to try to. You know, figure out you know who's going to play, who's going to do what, and uh, and and who can help us. Is he making uh, is he making progress as a blocker? Yeah, you know, I mean, he's a willing blocker, and um, you know, he's he's continuing to do that, and you know, we got to continue to stay on him with the details, and you know, he's got a he's got a unique skill set, and um, you know, he's done a nice job on special teams. How do you keep this week from being all about AJ Brown? I mean, it's best team in the National Football League, you know, ran for 360 yards. You know, it's be plenty of challenges. Um, it's a good football team on the road. You know, we had the, the Titans and who we have proven to be and, and, I, and, and hopefully who we are, you know, just have to have to prepare this week and, and we have to show up and, and, and try to do things that, that we know are su- successful and, um, you know, not, not start changing things and, you know, pointing fingers and, you know, just be accountable, make the corrections, uh, figure out why, ask questions, um, learn from it, you know, and, and, and make sure that you know, we look at the things if, that we do when we're doing well, that we have success and, and when we don't. Kind of along those lines, Mike, how do you, it's not often that you guys lose games uh, the way that you normally win games, I guess is the best way to put it, up front, stopping the run, that kind of thing. How do you use that as a challenge going forward to get back to winning at what you guys do best? Well, man, it just, that, that's just fundamental football. Those are things that we have to uh, you know, be able to do, understand what the keys are each and every week. They change. And um, you know, when you don't do a very good job on the keys, it's going to be tough to, to win the football game. So you know, 
make sure everybody understands, keep things in perspective. You know, everybody's disappointed and upset when you lose, but you know, it's it's uh, it's a quick turnaround against uh, you know an excellent football team. Changing success running the ball yesterday. Just kind of what do you need to shore up going against a guy like Jalen Hurts who likes to run it as well. Yeah, we, hopefully we have better rush lanes and than what we had on yesterday. You know, they're going to design runs for them that you know they may you know they may outnumber you just based on you know the quarterback running and what defense you're in. You know we'll we'll know that they they have designed runs, but then also you know his longest run I think yesterday was was a drop back pass and. Um, you know we'll, we'll have to have much better rush lanes and rush coordination and understanding. You know who it is that we're playing. Any change in Ben's status? From what? Is he had a concussion protocol? Uh, Ben's working his way through. You know we'll keep monitoring it and see how he is Wednesday. What did he do to earn his snaps, and how do you think he he did with his opportunity? Did excellent. They they challenged him. They tried him five times. He won f six times. He won five and and lost one. So say so he was probably the best. Uh, the group of corners and did everything that that he could do with the sp the, the snaps that he got. So, you know, he gets in there, kind of does it the way we coach and challenges, plays square. You know, had a PBU, so that's what he did. As we see, like, it seems like the creativity is kind of expanding for guys like Chig and for for Traylon. So for those young players, like, is that because of acquired confidence that you guys have in them, acquired confidence that they're having, comfortability? Like, what is behind? You know what seems to be an uptick in attempts to really go out. Yeah, and get them I mean, the just trying to get the you know the ball to guys that you know can help us and have you know done a nice job and earned earned the, the those reps. Um, you know that may change each week based on you know a certain defense or what we see. Um, you know, you got your core core offense or core defense, and then you try to figure out how much you can handle. You know, game plan wise. Uh, that you can put in. December this week. What's the challenge of finding your best football and grounding in the form over the last several weeks? Well, you have to continue to improve. You know, you have to continue to improve when practice reps are down late in the season. Uh, focus on you know what how you're going to improve technically, skills that, that that you need for your job, how you're going to improve physically, how much more rest you plan on getting. Look at your nutrition, your conditioning, uh, weight training. Uh, and then focus on improving mentally, you know, how, you, how you're absorbing the information, um, your ability to get recovered from good plays, from wins, from bad plays, from losses, you know, keep things in perspective. So that, that's the challenge, and that's, you know, where we're starting. Do you feel like Randy's made some progress where you can get your kicker back soon, or does that remain to be seen? Uh, you know, I think he's, you know, he's feeling better, but it, it's um, – I think we'll have to monitor it uh, as we go down uh, towards the end of the week and see how he feels and see if he's going to be able to kick Wednesday or Thursday. And, you know, it's such a, um, a violent, uh, I guess, action, you know, that you just have to make sure that, that he can do everything that we need him to do as far as kicking field goals and kicking off. Any of your practice? Him, or is there, if he's healthy, some question as to where you go? Um. I don't know if we're ready for that yet. I think I'm just focused on, um, you know, getting him as healthy as possible. And, you know, Caleb hit the ball well, had the touchbacks, and, you know, had the one that I'm sure he'd like to have back that wasn't his best swing. But other than that, I thought he kicked the ball well. Uh, open any practice windows for this week for IR guys? Well, we'll, see, we'll look at, uh, you know, see where Kyle is and Ola and see what they feel like on Wednesday. Yeah, obviously, you know, kind of. I think it kind of starts with the run defense. Um, I mean, we didn't have like one rusher get a hundred yards and nothing like that. But total, obviously, they had a hundred yards. Joe Burrow made some pretty good scrambles out there, making some plays. Um, but I just didn't think we was clean up in the run defense. Um, like I spoke yesterday, the third downs I didn't think was terrible. Joe Burrow, he threw some dimes out there. Um, one play that's number sixteen called Asylum was a great catch. And um, but other than that, man, I think. We just wasn't clean enough execution-wise on defense. And I'm pretty sure Verb was going to say that, you know, as a whole team, we wouldn't execute clean enough. So got to be better there. But um, we did some positive things, but just not enough. On those scrambles by Joe Burrow, uh, Jeffrey Simmons, he has said that there were breakdowns in communication. 
can you just elaborate? Like, what was the problem with communication on his scrambles? Yeah, when I was when I watched the film, you know, I think he had some pretty good rush lanes a couple of times. You know, I, like I said, the defense alignment, especially on third downs, in different situations, they have different rush games that they have called and. It didn't look like the execution, the communication with that was clean enough. And then obviously when you scramble on the back end, sometimes we're plastering receivers at the time. So he's finding open spots. So, you know, he didn't have any, I think it's, I don't know if his longest run was like 15 yards or something like that, but he did make some key scrambles uh, when he needed to. A few more X plays than you're used to, Kay. It looked like for the last several weeks, you guys had really done a good job kind of tamping down those X plays and maybe a few more yesterday than you're used to. And, and I guess if so, you know, what led to that? Yeah, the first one was, you know, a missed tackle on, on a catch by the running back. Um, and like I said, T. Higgins, he, you know, he played big time yesterday. He made some big time catches, contested catches. Um, and I, like I said, he's been playing well. But like I said, other than that, man, it wasn't, wasn't a whole lot of X plays, but those four X plays was definitely crucial because the first one uh, with the running back led to a scoring drive. And then obviously the ones that T. Higgins had led to a scoring drive too. So um, just can't have it. You guys have been pretty good at creating turnovers throughout the course of the year. But going back to the playoff game against them and then again yesterday, they've been hard to come by against Cincinnati. Right. What is it about them that makes it harder to get those takeaways? Yeah, I mean, I just think looking at the game yesterday, we didn't do a good enough job of just affecting him. You know, he had a lot of time back there to throw. Um, I think we sacked him one time, but he just had a lot of time, uh, was able to set his feet, and we just didn't affect affect him good enough. Um, Coverage was good a little bit down the field. Obviously, those guys made some good one-on-one -on -one catches, but you know, when you're not affecting the quarterback, not tipping passes, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to get those interceptions, especially against a really good, accurate quarterback as Joe Burrow. You talk about not affecting him. A lot of his passes were five, six yards or Correct. less. So is that just got to get your hands up because there's not enough time to get there? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I mean, a lot of times you're playing a lot of zone. Those five-yard catches are going to be there. Um, we just rally and try to tackle, try to punch the ball out. Uh, we got to we got to try to do that a little bit more, uh, especially when we're going to be playing all these zones. Guys are breaking on the ball, try to punch the ball out. We had some attempts, but you know they just didn't come out yesterday. Um, but like you said, when it's a quick game and, and balls coming out really quick, defense alignment they might not get the sack, but a lot of times they were to get their hands up, bat the ball down. Uh, but we, it just wasn't there yesterday. You said yesterday you maybe weren't sure what the not beating the, the better teams on the schedule meant. Uh, I'm just wondering if, if, if overnight and kind of with some time to think about it, you have a, a, a better sense of that and if it's cause for concern. I wouldn't say it's a cause for concern, but it is frustrating. Obviously, you go into these teams, I mean, these games against teams that, you know, they're going to be there in the playoffs and, and we don't win those ball games. It's frustrating for us, frustrating as a team because we feel like we're one of those teams as well. We feel like we know that we're a really good team. We feel like we're going to be there in January. Um, so to not beat those teams is, is, is disappointing at the time. But, you know, I wouldn't say it's a cause for concern because, you know, more than likely we'll see one of these teams, you know, in January when we get to the playoffs. What's it going to be like facing uh, A.J. on Sunday? Oh, it's going to be awesome. Uh, obviously, A.J. is my guy. You know, I'm happy he's having success in Philadelphia. Uh, I know he's going to be amped up uh, during the game. and. Uh, and I'm going back to my hometown, so that's that's going to be more about the thing for me. Going to have some family in the stands as well, so it's going to be fun. It's going to be a great environment. Um, their fans are pretty crazy. I mean, we had a preseason game in 2018, had a couple fights break out, so it should be exciting. Um, but you know, we, this is going to be us to take another step. You know, what I'm saying obviously coming off a disappointing loss uh, against a good team in Cincinnati. Uh, Philadelphia is a really great team that's playing really well, so we're going to have to go out there and play our best football community is going to make this game all about number 11. How, how do you guys avoid letting that be the case? I mean, the question is going to be there. You know, people are going to talk about, it. you know, it is what it is. Um, you know, like I said, I mean, obviously, AJ is a really great receiver, one of the best receivers out there, but they have a lot of other weapons. You know, Jalen Hurst is playing, playing really well, playing like one of the best quarterbacks in the league, Miles Sanders. So, I mean, we're going to make it about the entire offense, not just about AJ. Obviously, AJ is one of their guys, but you know, it's going to be about us trying to go beat the Philadelphia Eagles. Well, Paul asked about beating the best teams. This could be the best team you've played this year, so this could be the ultimate opportunity for you. Absolutely. So, like I said, man, we're going to have to play our best football to go out there and beat the Eagles. Because, like I said, they're playing, they're playing the best football out of any team in this league, offense, defense, special teams. We have to go out there and play a lot of – play great ball out there to go win this game, especially on the road. AJ was yeah. obviously a very popular guy, really. But, but have there been some times where he kind of surprised you with some of the – Jab or two that he that he seems to take on on social media back at the uh, back at the Titans. I mean AJ, you know, 
AJ always had, you know, little moments on social media and stuff like that. I wouldn't say it surprised me or nothing like that. Obviously, when he tweeted that, I think it was the Kansas City game or something like that. It was during the game, so I didn't see it. I didn't see it until after the game. It was funny. Um, but, you know, he got his thoughts and stuff like that. Uh, obviously, he's a guy that I respect and, I, you know, I love and admire. You're going to chop it up with him pregame, probably after the game and everything. But, you know, he's in Philly now. We can only focus on what we can do. You guys know him better than anybody else around the league. Is that any sort of advantage regarding his tendencies and talents? I mean, I don't know. Uh, he's obviously in a whole nother team. They're running a different scheme than we did here. Obviously, I know the type of, you know, he has great play strength. Uh, he's a guy that we, you know, even for cornerbacks, you know, to tackle this guy one-on-one -on -one is a pretty hard thing to do. Um, so we can't let him get a lot of space, a lot of separation in his routes because he's a dynamic athlete with the ball in his hands. Um, but like I said, I'll dive into all the film later on tonight to see, you know, if it's similar things that he did here that he's doing up there or not. I just know he's a playmaker, you know, hands down when he got the ball in his hands. Up in December historically here and played your best football. The calendar flips in a day here. Right. Does the intensity have to change this week and go up even another level? I mean, I felt like the intensity has always been there. You know, obviously, you know, sometimes you don't play your best ball, um, but I feel like once November football hits, like that's when intensity ramps up. Obviously, when you're playing against a great team, if we don't play with intensity, we're going to get our behinds whooped. So I would expect us to go out there, you know, try to play with the best. Um, best details, best intensity, uh, play more physical than we did yesterday. So, um, but yeah, I mean, historically, yeah, we've turned it up in December, but you know, I don't think those things kind of carry on from year to year. What has been the key then to, to ramping it up in December the way you guys have? Well, I just think it's the brand of football that we that we tend to play. You know, we're talking about a physical brand of football. When you, you get into December, guys are banged up. Uh, those type of things kind of carry over. Um, when you're talking about running the football and playing good run defense and, and getting turnovers on defense, those things tend to carry. That's, those are things that we historically have done. Uh, so like you said, when December football comes around, we go against the Eagles. Uh, those are going to have to be things that we do well to go out there and win the ball game. You, said you, had, you used to own maybe a Lido Shepard jersey and I think talked in the past about being the Eagles fan. What do you remember about those days and, and maybe growing up in Philly? Yeah, man, that was a, it, was, it was a really good time to remember Obviously, watching football, my dad and my uncles, and like you said, my, my dad brought me a Lito Shepard jersey. Uh, just those days watching Brian Dawkins uh, be one of the best players in the league. And obviously, when we got the trade for, for, Tara, for Tara Owens, that was probably the biggest moment um, in my young childhood. Just remember about how he just had the entire city just lit up. You know, I think his first game took like a, a, a a stop route, 75 yards or something like that. It was like it was on and popping. And then we obviously went to the Super Bowl. I remember being at a Super Bowl party at my aunt's house. A um, bunch of people there. I remember they had a cooler, a bunch of little Jello, you know, Jellos or whatever. I thought it was just you know Jello candy. It was Jello shots though. Didn't know it when I was young. Uh, so my mom had to tell me, no, you don't, you can't eat that. You can't eat that. Uh, but then obviously they lost the game. Uh, obviously against Vrabel and the boys, but. Uh, the whole, I remember the whole entire block was running the house pissed off, <clears throat> cussing and stuff like that. It was pretty crazy, but uh, that was a good time in Philadelphia for sure. Robert, uh, Vrabel just talked about how the key is just focusing on improvement with the calendar flipping to December, working to improve uh, and not pointing fingers. Mm -hmm. With the offense going over three yesterday in the red zone, how tough is it to maybe look at what could have, should have been done differently and, and work on making those improvements to get the offense into a higher gear. Yeah, I think you do that uh, after every game, every week. You always look at the film and look at what you can improve on and how you can be better. Um, obviously, we did go 0 for 3. Unfortunately, we didn't score in the, in the red zone. But um, that's why we have today to go over the film, look at it and study, obviously make the corrections and improve. It is December. We want to be at our best um, going into this this last run. And uh, we gotta we got to make all the plays that's there. Robert, talk us through that play in the red zone where he threw it to Chig, and ultimately, I think it is hands and bounced off. But it appeared you were out in the flat without anybody to cover you. What was working on that play? Yeah, uh, they kind of, kind of like zoned it off. Um, uh, ended up being there in the flat. Uh, Dontrell was able to able to work out the the backside player who had vision, um, who was looking in, and uh, it's one of those plays like it's a, it's a split second decision for the quarterback to make. Um, it's tough, but uh, sometimes uh, you gotta you gotta have those plays and be able to just just score in the red zone. Where are you in that progression? Is Chick before you in the progression, or uh, we gotta go over the, the playbook and review it and see what it is. How does it work too? Like I don't know what kind of 
deal you guys have? Is, like, is it a hand up thing where like you're there trying to grab attention, or is that even something that you guys would do, or what? I mean, we run our route. We're always expecting the ball. Uh, we're all trying to get open. Uh, quarterback has to work through his progressions, um, feel protected with the line up front, and uh, receivers got to work in a timely manner to get open. Um, it takes everybody, it takes defense to play accordingly and get to their zones and get to their drops uh, appropriately in a, in a timely fashion as well. So uh, it, uh, it's moving pieces. It's always different every single time. After seeing what Philly's capable of this year, how much do you guys have to, to step things up knowing you're going to put some points on the board? Yeah, I'll say they're, they're playing good football. They're playing, they're playing um, very crisp and, and fast and decisive. Um, so we, we just have to do the same. Um, we're one of those teams who can, who can play that way. We've, we've done it before, um, put it on tape. We just have to find a way to do it consistently. Um, and this is going to be a big test for us uh, to do it here at home against a good opponent. Felt what you figured as, as far as your role here, Robert, this year is just the kind of season you expected. I mean, you had a little bit of a hand in, in trying to come here uh, as well. Is this about what you signed up for? for uh, yeah, I would say we're, we're winning and contending for playoffs. Done. What are some things that got to get better? Maybe for you guys to kind of hit your stride here down the stretch. Uh, I would say these are like off-season questions. We're still in the mix. It's a lot of football left. Um, we got to go and 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 win these games um, and get after. We got Philadelphia this week. Um, we got to get a win. We, we're trying to get in playoffs. Trying to go to the Super Bowl. Um, we're doing whatever it takes to, to win these games. Yeah, as far as offense goes, I mean, what has to happen for you guys to kind of hit your stride here from a consistent, consistent Yeah, I would say, I would say spread it around. We could uh, spread around on, on, the, on the passing downs. We, we obviously know we could do on the ground. Obviously, block a little bit better to get Derek going. Um, uh, teams know we're going to run the football. We got to be able to run the football uh, when they know we're going to, um, execute in the red zone, um, and really, like, like, just, just play Chris football when, when the pass is there, catch it, get vertical, um, make guys miss, um, takes all 11. What about the creativity we see? Like you were in the backfield on, on that low red zone play. Are, are you happy with how things are starting to go creativity wise? And then how do you have a role as far as like being able to, you know, hey, look, let's try this, let's try that? Yeah, I would say, I would say uh, the, the, the shots are there. I mean, we, we just gotta, we gotta click on them. Like I said, it takes all 11. Um, sometimes it takes 22 when you look at the defenses as well. Um, but uh, I would say the, the, the options are there. We, we're, we have shots. Um, we just got to protect up front. Guys get uh, open in a timely matter. Um, we have to catch the football, and uh, we got to throw the football as well. When you have trailing emerging like these last two games, 50-plus yard receptions, mm -hmm. what does that do for the offense? And you know, What are your thoughts on how he's emerging as another playmaker for you? Yeah, I, I like it because I feel like uh, it brings confidence to the passing game, um, a playmaker to go up and, and snatch the ball. Um, I feel like it, it just feeds energy to, I would say, throw the ball a little bit more. And um, we, we have playmakers who could go out there and, and make these plays when, when given the opportunity, trailing, showing that, and then being able to on the, be a receiver on the other side of that, uh, have him make plays downfield, back the defense up, and really allow guys to, to work underneath and, and create more space in these zones, um, we have a playmaker who go up and stretch the defense. Um, it, it opens up uh, the passing game. Can't they get you more one-on-one -on -one opportunities out there? Yeah, I would say so. Uh, we, I mean, we're 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 getting zone, we're getting one-on-ones, we're winning matchups, we're we're beating the guys. Uh, we just gotta we just gotta clip. How many times have you played in Philly, and is there anything unique about playing there? I would say uh, it's um. It's a different team, I would say. It's a it's a different group. How they're playing, um, their confidence. Um, every every year is is different, and you see like this team, the swagger is there, the confidence is there, and they're playing like it on all phases of, of football. And uh, with a team like that, you just got to go out there and just just bring it, show up. Don't doesn't matter who they are, um, doesn't matter what they've done. They got to play us, um, play physical football, and uh, every every team is beatable. Schmidt and Santa Claus. <laughs> Are they different to play in front of there? I, I haven't had that experience uh, in, in Philadelphia. I know this is probably going to be a big one. Um, some some uh, some trays and all that stuff going on there. But uh, we just want to go out there and obviously ignore the noise, ignore the crowd. Uh, we love the energy that they bring. Um, can't wait to hear it. Uh, we just want to go out there and, and 
silence them, and then I guess make them talk after. In your experience when, when guys play against their old team the way AJ's about to, do we make too much of that, or is there really a, a boost you think he'll have going against his old team? Uh, I don't know. I, I can speak um, on myself when, my, when I play at old teams. It's more so like you want to do well. I wouldn't say it's more so like a, I have to like show them like, like what, I, what I'm capable of, all this or whatever, like just uh, retaliation or something like that. I feel like it's more so just going out there and want to just play well. You want to do that every single game. But when you go against a, a team you used to play for, you just want to just make sure you get the opportunities to, to showcase yourself and, and be who you are, really.